Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are at. Hope you had a fantastic day. It's all say here, and I wanted to follow up with our uh, Curse City boss challenge uh, with trying to beat the bosses that we have. And I try to give as much information regarding some approaches that you can use to beat them. Uh, this was requested by the community, so I, I wanted to oblige you guys and help out with some information that uh, of some approaches as well as some methodologies that could help you out along the way. So we're still in Cobble Market. It is November 11, 2024, so uh, depending on the time of watching this video, you may have a different rotation. However, we are going to be going against a C8 Bommel, which is going to be a dwarf, barbarian, and I believe that's a Sylvan Watcher HP support condition restriction. So you can only use HP or support champions or uh, cha and champions that are within these specific uh, factions. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to give you my brute force approach, which is basically I I'm a top end player when it comes to my account being more progressed. Uh, but nevertheless, it is kind of with the value that I can kind of just ignore the mechanics and just go aggressively against them. However, for uh, me to try to break it down as best I can in regards to uh, players that may not be as progressed, I want to give you a little bit of an answer and kind of give you some ideas as to how to approach this boss fight, even if you don't have my champions, but you may have some options that could give you some value along the way. So, with that being said, tip number one, as we always talked about in our previous video, is going to be knowledge is power. Let's look at uh, our stages tool where we can find some information regarding uh, the boss himself. So, I, I went ahead and pre, pre looked it up, and as of right now, um, Bommel on this stage is level 150 and he's Force Affinity. So let's double check and val validate. It is accurate. Um, and then let's go ahead and take a look and see what his stats are. So he's 125 speed, not too fast, nothing crazy. Um, he has a resistance of 150, which means you need about 175 to maybe 200 plus in order to be able to effectively debuff him. And then, of course, his accuracy is 100, and you would need roughly about 205 to rep prospectively have about a 90% chance to resist effects. So I've, obviously we want to get that true closer towards that true 3% value, which is 97% chance to, re you know, re or remove or not have a, a resist the debuff you want to be higher than that so think maybe 255 or higher depending on what you got going on so that's what you want to know first and foremost before we go to any other particular uh information about any of the teams we know we now know what the bosses bring into the table now with that being said i'm going to show you my brute force uh, approach i'm actually going to go ahead and do something a little bit different this round some of my champions are probably not going to be built up but i have enough on the board to kind of do it should get the job done for the most part right um, and then we'll go from there and then we'll talk about methodology which is actually participating in the fight and playing against the mechanics itself So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and use this and just set up and try to get as much damage as I can We got decreased defense to play. I'm gonna go ahead and whack them all see if we get a little bit of output Got a lot uh, going there already. We're gonna do an a2 here because he's gonna do a buff strip We're gonna buff here see if we can pull ourselves up a little bit more and then I'm gonna buff again See if I can kind of pick up more value got an a3. We got a little bit more damage I'm just gonna keep poking at him until he gets lower and lower and then, of course, we're going to wait for him to do his uh, his skills, which is going to drop a couple bombs. Uh, we're going to kind of wait that out. So let's see. He's going to do his first buff. He's going to bomb us a little bit. We resist it, which is a very important thing to kind of keep in mind. I'm going to go in A2 since he's under that, and we got the kill. So it's basically I'm just brute forcing it, just doing as much damage as I can with a nuker. Allah's is my nuker in this particular regard. It could be anybody as long as they have a decent amount of uh, damage multipliers, damage output, right? Um, his build's pretty pretty nice because he's you know empowered and he's pretty high blessed and whatnot. But the going is that you just pretty much want damage um, and you want to be faster than the boss so you can get ahead of him, right? And the faster you go, the more turns you get, the more you do. But with that being said, that's just my brute force attempt at beating this boss to show you a more methodical approach as to how to beat him. The things you need to understand is one is how does this boss uh, mechanically handle himself in a sense, right? Well, his active abilities, which are pretty much uh, what he did at the beginning, he uh, he spawned two bombs. He gave himself increased attack prior to that, and then of course he uh, uh, every single time he has a um, turn meter reduction effect go on to him, he spawns another one. So you want to avoid turn meter reducers, and I'm going to give you an example with my High Katoon here, who is a damage reducer, and then of course uh, for his other stuff, he also does a buff strip and then he puts bombs uh one bomb on you automatically for two turns and then he does an additional bomb for each buff that was removed by this skill so but being too buff centric can be a blessing or a curse depending on the scenario of this fight and you want to be very mindful of it and then of course he applies hp burn um on his basic ability or his magma flood uh it's an hp burn for three turns and then of course enemies receive 100 percent more damage on it for every bomb they're under so it's a scaling factor you want to be very careful with that now, with that being said, I wanted to show you guys a little bit more in regards to... I'm just going to do some throwaway turns here. Um, I want to show you, in particular, 
Hikatoon. Her A3 has a chance, uh, although it's not like a high chance, it's still a chance to decrease turn meter by 15%, 50%, right? So I'm going to do it here. We're going to reduce it. And because it succeeded, you get a bomb. These bombs are very dangerous because if they explode, uh, they do a lot of damage and they pretty much ignore almost everything. For the lack of better words, they almost ignore everything. So um, I would I would advise you to uh, be careful. I, they don't they don't avoid everything. I'm actually going to try to see if we can set this up a little differently here and show you another way. Um, I don't believe it stops on it, it doesn't go through unkillable, and I don't believe it does too much to uh, um, block damage either. Those are some values which I think both uh, Emic here as well as my laws have something to bring to the table here. So I'm actually going to just do a throwaway A1. This is going to debuff us anyways. We also have Odin. I forgot about that too. His passive every nine turns, which is very very valuable. This is actually kind of a little busted, but. Nevertheless, you know, you kind of keep it going. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stall for time here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see if we can could, we could loop this around. I want the bomb to get a turn, believe it or not. So I'm going to go ahead and just constantly keep spawning bombs. The A1 did the decrease speed. We're going to do an A1 here, A1 here. Also, another thing that's pretty valuable about stimming the, the damage output of a bomb uh, or the dread bombs themselves is being able to apply freeze to him which is where creodin could be very valuable so those are some factors that we need to avoid and some factors that we need to maybe in, in think consider incorporating so i'm just gonna keep doing some throwaway turns and we're gonna see if we can validate whether or not this goes through uh unkillable and block damage here for a minute i want to double check my knowledge here it's been a minute since i cared about uh bommel's uh mechanics unfortunately a little privilege you know in terms of being able to do a decent amount of uh brute forcing here i'm actually gonna start speed boosting here because we're getting close do an a1 throwaway we're going to start with, I believe, an A3 here. We're going to A3, which is basically giving everybody unkillable. I'm going to do an A1 here. I'm actually going to do the next one I get a chance towards uh, over here on this bomb in particular. So, matter of fact, let's see. There goes the first explosion. Unkillable. It did do damage there, but the block damage champions didn't take anything. So, there's your confirmation. Now, I'm going to do A2 here for the shield. Um... His unkillable should give him a little bit to go for it. So we're going to go ahead and do this. See if we can get more bombs out and play. I'm going to do some damage here. Oh, it's going to kill him, unfortunately. Okay. But that, that, that'll be something of value. Maybe if you have a block damage champion or champions that can give you some kind of value, that, that could be pretty nice. Now, um, I'm going to say this as an example to kind of help you out with damage mitigation. Uh, one good reference point in terms of knowledge, going back to our point one, is to understand how those bombs play into it. And they give you actually a pretty good synopsis. So the bombs uh, that are placed by the boss require him to meet an accuracy check versus your resistance. So champions such as, I'm going to give some examples here of like champions that have good value in terms of being able to keep your team alive, like... Demitha maybe in a high resistance build could be pretty good because not only does she have a duration and a shield with continue or block damage with continuous heal, she also applies shield. There's some value there. So shield is good for bombs that are placed on your bar as a debuff from Bommel himself. The dread bombs, the ones that are placed on the field, the shields are not valuable towards. So I think you want to keep that in mind in terms of like a mitigation standpoint. So block damage from her for the dread bombs and of course shielding maybe for the bombs and of course block damage for the bombs themselves are pretty good. Um, of course, you saw me use Emic, who can give you unkillable, so you'll take damage, but you just won't die, is a good value. And then, of course, Creodin for being able to... Let's go ahead and put her back in real quick. I want to show you something real fast. We're going to do an A2 by... Or we're going to try to spawn as many bosses, uh, bombs as we can. We'll do some quick throwaway turns here real fast. Uh, let's see. I'm going to boost her up. We're going to try to see if we get a bomb out early. And then we're going to see if we can get him back into play here. So he's going to do some things here. We're going to be fast enough to get, I think, our turn. But I'm going to go ahead and try to do some freezing here. So be mindful that there is an affinity uh, difference. You know, he's going to be forced and his bombs are going to be forced. Uh, and Creatos being uh, a magic is going to be a little bit of a negative turnout. But the fact that he has the... Uh, any freezer in particular could have the ability to place a freeze on the bomb. Help stem some of the burn and some of the mechanics for the dread bomb itself so look for freeze champions if you need like one of your five to be that and it can help you out additionally speaking um he's going to try to play some debuffs on some people and one way you can kind of mitigate that is through resistance so uh the way i would look at this is maybe you try to find somebody who is a reviver or uh someone who can provide sustain to your team uh, such as like Demitha and put them in higher resistance. Remember your check like we were showing earlier is only 205 or higher. So if you are mid to 
late game or even more further progression you can even you can do that uh, pretty easily i would say but if you are on the earlier progression standpoint it will take some effort but you can use set bonuses area bonuses and some of those something of the likeness to get to that desired stat line and then from there try to amplify tankiness as well as uh speed and then try to help sustain your team up in terms of value that way now timing is also important though because you're going to get bombed first and foremost, and he's going to strip your team, right? So it removes all buffs. So you want to time it so that when the bombs, the Dreadhorde bombs, or whenever the bombs that are about to apply onto your team are about to go into effect, you have the buffs up and ready to go. So speed tuning could be a bit of a value here um, in reference to like maybe setting up your team to go, and then before they get their next turn, you can maybe have Demith at the top of the turn or at the bottom of the turn to make sure that they have their stuff going so that when the next champion on your team that's about to get the bomb activation or about to get hit or something like that has those buffs in place so that they can kind of peacefully transition into their team uh, into their into their turn without any issues so be very careful about that there is a little bit of a mechanic where you have to watch about it it can't be uh resisted or blocked in terms of removed or resisted or removed or, sorry blocked or removed i'm speaking too fast here um but you can resist it or you can just basically try to out sustain or out tank it so that'd be my big value for you of course also debuffing uh the boss himself here and trying to get as much damage output as you saw is going to be pretty important too uh be mindful of the bombs when they're out freezing so pretty much sustain with a high resistance build or a meeting the requirements resistance build um champions that can give you block damage uh unkillable um and then of course freeze champions uh, debuff debuffers that can help you set up for your boss and then kill him and then of course you can do a high damage output for your fifth slot maybe fourth and fifth, fifth could be kind of interchangeable you can be a debuffer who also does de decent damage is also applicable now another thing that people have done before in the past that i want to show you guys that depending on what's available here it may not be good for this particular rotation but for future rotations uh you can bomb the bomber uh, and that's what this boss is. He's basically a bomb champion. So if you ever see a rotation where they say they want Shadow Can or not Shadow Can Skinwalkers that are also uh, attack based, for example, you can maybe use uh, uh, Nishak or a bomb champion in some capacity to kind of get you in there. So um, unfortunately, none of these champions meet the conditions. But uh, high bombers that that you can put some high attack on or whatever the scaling factors like if it was Commodus, for example, uh, he scales off HP. Uh, you could do a lot of bombers and then a bunch of ally attackers and try, try to send them in and get as many bombs as they can. Let the bombs activate on the boss and you just see it chip away. That's obviously one route you can do, but unfortunately with the conditions, it's a little bit harder to facilitate getting those. Because like looking at this particular rotation, I only have one ally attacker that I can see right now. Uh, one legitimate ally attacker. Uh, and then, of course, that's pretty much it. So unless you have duplicate pie drags, which I'm trying to make this for the case of the scenario, trying to give you more options than just the top of the line, you know, creme de la creme choices of champion pool, you're going to have to find a way to navigate through this fight. And that's going to be very, very important, which is sustain is the name of the game. You know, out tank it, pace yourself, go tanky with some of your builds. And of course, maybe some resistance along the way and get you there. And truth be told, you see, I'm kind of resisting majority of the, bo uh, the bosses on my side. My, my Great Hall is finished in this department for affinity bonuses, but also in terms of Curse City, I could technically get another 80 there, which will eventually happen. I'm working on uh, uh, HP right now, so resistance is going to be last. But once that is facilitated, that's 80 plus 80. You already have 160 out of the 205 that you want to hit for a 90% chance. You throw a banner on top of that, you pretty much kind of hit the requirements you're looking for. Now, it is going to be effort. No matter how you look at it, how you go about getting your stats, there's going to be some effort to making sure that you can meet those requirements. But when you do, you'll be able to hopefully sustain and prepare yourself and keep your team going into that fight to where you can kind of close it out. Note to, to anybody watching, if this is your first time dealing with Bommel, the Dread Bombs themselves, I think, are more problematic than the actual bombs that are put on you. So you want to make sure that if you're going to put block damage or unkillable or something like that, your timing for those are just as important as dealing with the, the healing side for the actual bombs that are placed on you. Both are relevant, but I would say, words to the wise, maybe uh, adjust your speed tunes to be more so for the bombs that are placed by the boss on the field, the Dread Bombs, than the ones that are placed on you, because you can kind of manage that a little bit better. Uh, and of course, cleansers, uh, sustain champions, and whatnot are very valuable. I'm kind of hitting the dead horse here at this point. But anyways, with that being said, if you guys have a different approach on how you guys approach this fight, let me know in the comments below so that maybe somebody else could be useful for you. Uh, uh, people that are listening in that are trying to find answers to this could maybe find some value for you. Uh, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and always, always remember, stay ascended.